So 99% of the people who have clicked on this video already know what this is. I'm not going to bore you with details and how to build it, when in reality, all the links are in the description below. It's gonna cost you $200 or right around there. You're gonna to have to provide a little bit of wood for what I made, and then it's gonna take you maybe an hour to put together. There's not really a whole lot of building when it concerns this. It's just a lot of screws and kind of knowing how to put it together. So right here, that's it. I made this very modular so that I can take it apart, put it in the corner. It's very heavy, it's very rigid. The nice part is, is this router is attached to the cradle, so it's not gonna rock and kind of ruin the workpiece and also not gonna fly out and hurt me. So it is buttery smooth. It's a little bit loud, but who cares? It's attached to a router. Those are a little bit loud. And honestly, I think in the future, everybody is gonna be building their router sleds like this. You don't have to weld anything. They're cut at predetermined lengths. You can make this as big or as small as you want to. I've got this blue painter's tape kind of defining the outline of what the cut can be. So it's about 30 inches wide, 65 inches long, and that's just the kit that I chose. So like I said, all the links for exactly what I'm using is down in the description, down to the screws. So some of y'all might already understand linear rails and say, well, these bearing blocks are gonna be, be covered in sawdust. Well, I honestly don't think it's that big of a deal. The only thing that I can think of to cover up the bearing blocks right there and allow them to slide would be whisker biscuits. If you're from the archery world, you already know what that is. If you are not, Google it and you'll see, but I think you could probably get some cheap ones off of AliExpress for probably $5 a piece. And with eight of these bearing blocks, you have 16 openings. So you're probably looking at around $100 anyways, because you're afraid that some dust might get in the bearing blocks when these are super standard parts and readily available and very cheap too. So if one of them went out, just buy a few extra and replace them. I haven't bought any extra because I don't think that's gonna be an issue at all. So the benefits to this thing are that if you do not have a planer that's wide enough, you can start making cutting boards that are a lot wider and you have something that's very dependable and not as janky as some plywood that you threw together that could end up ruining your workpiece. This is super stable. There's very little flex in it. Um, here are some of the things that I did wrong that I think others could benefit from knowing from. So this whole wooden structure was all supposed to just be the wood on the side, nothing right here. I put quarter inch acrylic down at the bottom because that's the thickest thing that Home Depot offered. And honestly, it was still flexing a little bit and I didn't like it. So I put in these ash braces on the side. It shored the whole thing up. There's no flex to it at all. This thing is solid as can be. And honestly, I don't think I'm gonna have any problems with it. But if you wanted to have the acrylic base so that you can kind of see what you're cutting a little bit more, uh, which is what I was going for, I'll link some stuff on Amazon. I wouldn't go thinner than 3 8 I'll put a link for 3 8 and half inch. When it concerns the height, right now I have three quarter, it might be an inch thick, but I've got material under underneath my rails so that it stays permanently attached to it. Uh, permanently attached is just a few screws. So if I ever needed additional height on this, I could put some thicker material underneath it. With what, with how I have it set up right now, it will cut up to two and three quarter inches because the bottom of my router plate is flush with the bottom of these rails and that's how tall off this is. Um, a plunge router I think is necessary for this, um, especially if you're planning on taking multiple passes on it because you can just dial in the exact height that you want it very easily lock it in. Honestly, this thing's been a joy to use. It doesn't feel janky or unsafe at all, so I have been very, very pleased with this. You might say, well, it's probably going to run off of these rails and come at you. Yeah. It might. So you might want to put some blocks right there. I'm never going to get that close. Um, yeah. I am leaving these open so that I can easily take this entire assembly off, pop each one of those out, put it in the corner, and it stores away nicely. I do have the other end, and that has stops on it. I got this uh, and built this specifically for these cookies. Um, I was afraid to put them through my planer because ingrain rips out a whole lot. If you've ever made an ingrain cutting board, you know that up until that point you spent so much work, then you end up gluing all these rails on the side of them to mitigate any tear out, and then you pass it through your planer and just kind of cross your fingers. Well, if you're doing a lot of cutting boards, you really don't have to have a planer if you have something like this. This could replace a planer and a joiner if you're in a two-car garage. I would say this $200 spent is well worth it, and it's going to be cheaper than any 
quality planer um, or joiner and you're going to be able to get a lot of utility out of it. You could have this set up and turn this into so many things. These rails provide a lot of support so you can run a lot of different things off of them. So you could have this rail to be able to run your router. You could also make a different guide so that you could put your saw into it and turn it into a track saw. All of these bearing blocks have little locks in them so you can lock this into place and know that it's not going to wander around. You can make nice straight cuts with it. You could even use this to create a little blank that you can run your chisels and have your whetstone on the bottom of it and use these to nice and consistently have the same motion all the time and the same height. So there is a lot of things that can be done with this. The best one of these on the market right now that you can just go out and buy is from Woodpeckers. They, it's their slab flattening mill. That is around $1,200 in order to have all that. And honestly, I just don't think it's worth it. I've sat awake many a night thinking, oh, I could probably justify that. But for somebody who's using this maybe twice a month, that is not something that I can really justify that $1,200 on. $200 though, I definitely can. And the great part is, is this $200 isn't wasted. If I wanna make this considerably longer, all I have to do is buy two more of these long pieces and extend that out and just have them line up and these bearing blocks are just gonna run right between them without skipping a beat. So this system is very modular. There's a lot you can do with it. Um, I'm excited about figuring out what this is gonna look like in a year because although this definitely does the job and I'm happy with it, I think that it could be done a whole lot better. Um, especially the thing like the cradle where I wish that there was a lot more acrylic and I could see what was happening because at this point, I probably should have just used plywood and called it a day and saved $30. When it comes to these bearing blocks, these are the pre-drilled holes that are already in the rails and I just use some screws and put them directly into the bearing blocks. I didn't drill an additional two screws so that all four screws were snug and I don't think it's really causing any kind of grief. Do not put the screws on the inside of your cutting area. What that's going to do is it's going to cause the bearing block to rack a little bit. You're not going to get a smooth motion. That's something that I first started off doing to get a little bit of extra space uh, between the rails and that did not work out very well. So if you wanted to, you could drill some new screw holes at the very end and that's going to give you a little bit more cutting width. For these rails up top, these are around 47 and a half inches wide. And honestly, I think you go a little bit wider without worrying about a lot of sag or anything like that. But if you were to use these long rails, which I forget the millimeters, but I think they're close to 78 inches. Now, these, if you ran these across the top, I think there probably would be some sag. So maybe stiffening up with something. Um, they might make some of these little uh, that are a little bit bigger, but I haven't really dove in that deep into it because you know, I just wanted something that was easily accessible that anybody could grab off of Amazon that would be cheap and that they could go ahead and make something that was very dependable. In my shop, that's exactly what I want is dependability. I want to be able to grab this in two years and know that it's going to work the exact same way that it did when I first made it. And honestly, I don't think that this is going to be any kind of an issue. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time when I have no idea what I'll be doing. Thanks. Bye.